We're gonna get straight into business. No time for chit or chat. Here's a song. Would you like to say the name? I'll say the name if that's okay. Yeah, thanks. How does that sound, Nathan? Sounds fine. All right. All and action. Leopold. Large, snarky, surly man. Leopold. Leopold. Possible last name, John. Leopold. Assistant to Gary Nintendo. Leopold. Little freaks beware. Leopold. Huge, beautiful teeth. Leopold. Eyebrows that precede him. Leopold. Rommelwood Military Academy. Well, a nice. fantastic start there to episode yeah, episode eight of the Springfield <laughs> Simpsons cast cast. Bonsoir Gutten Arben and Misa Il Kair. We are the antiquarian Lawrence M. Nightingale and Flimsy Rosewater, joined tonight by Professor B.F. Wellington of the Miskatonic Polytechnic Stockport. Beef, how are you? Beef Wellington here. Hello. <laughs> uh, what's going on? Yeah, what's all this about? Well, we are the liquors of dusty tomes located in the disused bowels of Springfield Park and the tunnels to the Town Hall of Lee. We have been employed by the Simpsons files in Spotty Archive to haphazardly document the lives of Springfield backwaters and are haunted by an outside which circles around us but can never fully be acknowledged. Thanks to our cousins, our cousins at the MFI and DB, we are the professionals here and safe from harm. Beef, could you tell us something about yourself? And your love of this character, Leopold of the Simpsons. It's interesting. I'm thinking Wigan. 1996. A young Beef Wellington, you know, prepared Monday morning. Oh, bloody hell, come on. All of a sudden, this guy. It, there's a, there's a, there's, it's um, a school, school auditorium. They're all on the stage. Super Nintendo Charmers, you know, Bart's there. Oh, who's this guy here? You can see him, he gets up, this guy, he, he moves to the pulpit, the speaker position, and it was one of those moments, you know, when uh, people talk about the Wizard of Oz, you know, black and white to colour, all of a sudden, I was just like, yeah, no, I, I understand what it's all about now, yeah. This nice, is, is it's it. a little yeah. bit like uh, Gaza at Italia 90. Exactly, yeah, football came home, yeah, well, Leopold came home in that moment for me, yeah. So hopefully those two metaphors have helped to set the scene, Hmm. But what I'd like to know is a, is a fact about you, Beef, Professor of Simsology and Mischief and Rumness. What is something that we can put in the bank about you? As the name suggests, Beef Wellington, uh, I like sliced meat, uh, thinly sliced meat. Uh, I used to work as a butcher at Asda, you know, in the butchery section. Yeah. Uh, and people would come up to me and they'd say, oh, Beef, uh, I've got the in-laws coming over today. I need something with a wow factor. What should I make? And I'd say, oh, Beef Wellington's the name. Beef Wellington's the game, but don't forget the pancake. Because you have to, you know, in, in a Beef Wellington, the most important part is the pancake because you have to wrap the meat in the pancake. Otherwise, the, the juices from the meat secrete out and make the, the, the pastry soft. And uh, so they'd say to me, you know, I'm walking around Stockport, they say to me, hey, Beef Wellington. And I say to them, don't forget the pancake. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it all the time. It's fun. Would you say, like, a, would a crate do the job or does it need to be a hefty? The, uh, well, what's it, a crepe is just a pancake by another name, is it not? Yeah, they're very thin though, and I don't know whether they'd soak up the beef juices enough. And and the worst thing I imagine from what you're describing there would be a Wellington that that where the pancake dissolved as you're attempting to to clasp it together, serving it to the in-laws or maybe your new bow. I've never seen a pancake just... dissolve though. That's... <laughs> you're you're, <laughs> you're a very lucky man if you wow. have a pancake dissolve, Lawrence. Um, you're allergic yes. to shellfish people, and we found out last time you have no blood. What's what's up with you, and what else do we need to know? I was just taking in all the poetry. I had the same experience with Leopold, but it was in a pound bakery in a scam. In 2003, another fact about me, um, I have a strong disdain for cabbage patch kids. I just There's something that, about them that uh, gets to me. Rouse me up. Triggered. Are the garbage pill kids better or worse then? I'm unfamiliar with them, so they are better already. 
And I am a ribbon aficionado. And with so many ribbons to choose from, my go-to ribbon this week is Jacquard, a durable ribbon named after the 19th century weaver, Joseph Marie Jacquard. It is unique in that both sides of the ribbon exhibit the same pattern, just with inverse colors. Beef, are you a ribbon aficionado, would you say? Or are you more um, other furnishings? Streamers, bits of string. No, not ribbons, though. <laughs> no, no. Are too ostentatious for me, if I, I'll be honest. Is it the durable nature? Do you like the fact that the ribbons are, um, the party poppers and the streamers are things that they're done the day after you can clean up, whereas ribbons will, will last well, a lifetime? It's like it's like biscuit and cake, innit? You don't pay tax on cake. You don't pay tax on string. You do pay it on a ribbon because it's a luxury item. Oh, and it's, it's it, it decadent. Would you say that ribbons are the Jaffa cakes of the notable string world? Even after eights, they're always really pushing it. No. Interesting. Uh, the real question here is, have you, is the salt circle intact? Within the last 15 minutes, yes. Unless something crazy has happened in the last 15 minutes. God help us all if, that's, if that is the case. Oh, look. Look, they're in the dust. A little spider. Why are you dressed so with your spear dripping with blue blood spider? Are you guarding the salt? Yes. Oh, and uh, Beef, maybe you, you would like to ask a question to our cat, Berry the Veil, the Baroness. She is in charge of multi-academy trusts, faith schools, and counter-extremism. Do you have any questions for such a cat? Uh, how is life in free schools, multi-academy trusts, faith schools, and counter-extremism? Is the word hard and the air was long? Um, meow. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. I'll put it that way. Now. And finished. sorry, cat. First time you've spoken a full sentence. I was, I thought you were winding down. Now, no, no the, uh, the Baroness will not be interrupted. I finished. And as for the mice, they seem now to have a tiny, tiny pig with them. Oh yeah, it's quite cute. Hey, queer. Indeed. But we got a letter from Kurt Vonnegut. I don't know if um, Beef, you would like to read the letter that we've received from from Kurt Vonnegut, if, um, if that's something that, that, that is on your, if you're a reader, are you a, are you a re would you describe yourself as a reader? There's not much call for reading when you you're slicing meat. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> occasionally, you know, I'll, 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 I'll have a look and as you call it, read something, but yeah, I can take it or leave it to be honest. Yeah. It's more, for me, the letters are a puzzle on the page and I like to decode them. Um, mm. Why don't we tag team a, a, a paragraph each so we don't get too tight? Dear Chairman McCartney, what is your effing problem? American writers whose books have been destroyed are extraordinarily insulted. Seems that writers are very unreal to you lot and Drake. I am writing this letter to let you know how real I am. Drake is now on my shit list. I am not evil. You and Drake have damaged my reputation in the eyes of the children and then in the eyes of their id. Do you have the courage and ordinary decency consigned to the fires of you? <laughs> and Drake, where do you get off saying that writers are sort of rats like people who enjoy making money from poisoning the minds of young people? I'm in fact a large, strong person, 51 years old, who did a lot of farm work as a boy, who is good with tools. I have raised six children, three my own and three adopted. Two of them are farmers. I have not been arrested or sued for out. You are <coughs> ignorant, harsh and un-American manner. Then you are bad citizens and fools. It was a rotten lesson you taught young people in a free society. When you denounce by books, your children will not survive. Again, you have insulted me, Drake, and I'm very real, Drake. You motherfucker. So, so something has really riled up um, Kurt there. Do we know who he is yet? We're, we don't know if Kurt Vonnegut is some pseudonym or whether it is indeed the real Kurt Vonnegut, the writer. What we do know is that Drake lived with us for three months and we believe that is why we are getting these letters to Chairman McCartney and Drake. But anyway, I feel we digress a little bit from the main purpose that we're here for. So, Beef, um, what what rank would you, what list is, is would you put Leopold? Is he an A-lister or would you put him down in the in the H-listers with um, Cosine? Number one, Cosine's on my A-list. So I don't, I don't know what list you're reading off. I would Ham, I, Ham and Cosine, the super friends. They're they're up. They're, they're, that's really fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they for us we rank them as G and H respectively. But I'm I'm open to a discussion on this. I have put for me in the A list. You have Bose's like and 
one which one is which one is Margie's sister with the triangle her Selma that one she those two are A-listers but, but if you had to choose beef and you do what letter would you assign to Leopold well A that's, that's why I'm here isn't it because you you, you asked me who's, who's my A-list I told you cosine and Leopold and you didn't want to talk about cosine so no. here we are we no. have done a database cast in which Cosine did co-star, but maybe you can come back and uh, we can really give Cosine the time he deserves. But this time it's Leopold. But uh, mm. Daz, what, where would you put, or, or Flimsy, whoever you are, where would you put Leopold? On the <laughs> um, he's a tricky one, I'm going to say, because the scenes he's appeared in, he has been the, like central. But as I'll get to later... He's probably he's by far the least appeared character we've looked at so far. And um, I'd, I'd put him in like E because he spoke prominently. But then outside of that, he's just completely absent from 32 seasons of content. Whereas at least like even Kashmir showed up about four years ago. And she's super controversial. No Leo though. We can only hold out hope. Here's some cast 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 connections. So beef and flimsy. <laughs> If you uh, see whether any of these resonate with you, death, glasses, sun and other, school, cool and uncool, <laughs> mobbers and non-mobbers, and love connection. Do any of those things strike a chord when you think of Leopold? Well, school, obviously. He's, he is a, an education worker slash administrator, is he not? Assistant. I believe so. Uh, yeah. Look, I mean, Love Connection's interesting. I mean, you look at a man like Leopold, what's, he, what's his personal life like, do you think? I mean, he's, he's not unattractive, is he? You know, he's uh, he's physically put together, you know, he's charismatic. I, I always imagine him having a strict father, you know, a like military type, you know, kind of, yeah, and he's, he's socially awkward. I wouldn't be surprised to see him out with the dolly bird on his arm, male or female. And if I did see them then walking down the street and he had a glamorous young partner, I would think, good on you, Leopold. That's not surprised me at all. In fact, in many ways, if I saw him with a, a frumpy old mistress, I would think, come on, Leo. That's not what I would think from someone who had, as you say, that that sparkle, that gem. He's got something in his eye that, that makes you think that he could, if he picks you out in a crowd... You would leave that crowd and stand next to him. I believe oh, that he is, um, he's two people, so it depends which which one is the real one. Is he the the angry one or is he the loving one? Because he shows both sides of that in both of his speaking appearances. He might be very sweet-natured from the, like, the back half of the speeches he gives and, like, the delivery, but he could also be the furiously angry one. I wouldn't be surprised if he lived alone, angrily shouting at the uh, the wall. A Boo Radley type, if you will. Yeah, school also, yeah. And death. I, I think he's dead. I'll get into it later, but I think we see him die in one of these clips. Oh, good Lord. Who hurt him? Wait, him. That's a question for you as well. Who who hurt him? Who hurt? Uh, well, his dad hurt him. Then Skinner hurt him. Then the kids hurt him. And then, I mean, ultimately, do you mean who hurt him as in who killed him? I mean, you can take it. You can take it as face value, but it seems like you're suggesting who hasn't hurt him. I'm just well, just as, I'm just thinking about it now. I think we probably did. I witnessed the death of Leopold without even knowing it because one of those clips is there, then he's not. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, sorry, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm I'm coming to terms on it. I'm, I'm learning every. Yeah, it's a big deal. Sorry, yeah, he, carry on. He's gone the way of. Um... The other central lady in our cousin's life, he's joined her in the ranks of the undead. He's joined Possibly. Maud in the ranks of the semi-dead. Let me throw out some bio biographical information about Leo, and you can tell me if it's true, controversial, or whether you can add more to it. His name is Leopold Leo John, and he is Superintendent Chalmers' assistant. He's a large, surly, snarling man in his 50s, and he is one of the few Simpsons characters to have eyebrows. He has been seen at the Rommelwood Military Academy and the Enriched Learning Centre for Gifted Children. He frequently speaks through clenched teeth. He refers to children as little freaks. He is a stonecutter, high ranking. He has a scar on his cheek and suggested that his hobby is cross-stitching. I would like to interject. Please do. Things can be both controversial and true first. Secondly, Noted. Um, 
I, where does John come from? Uh, probably made up on the internet. I have no source. The Rommelwood thing and the Enriched thing, uh, yeah, both from Tapped Out. I don't think he has any actual connections to them whatsoever. Yeah, you see him be a bit nicer in Tapped Out because they just they mine whatever they can from these minor G, G or A-listers, like Leopold, who they will um, throw in there eventually, and then they need to give them like eight tasks. So they come up with something like, oh, well, he was kind of nice in that scene, so let's give him a task that's unexpected. I see. Beef. Are you familiar with the game Simpsons Tapped Out? Um, in passing, yeah. I mean, like your man was saying, basically, it's nonsense. It's free through again, all this cross stitching. Um, I mean, I've got issues with several things you've said that. I, Please bring it on. I'm not afraid of confrontation. I was watching this guy on, uh, on YouTube banging on about Leopold. Uh, here we go. Yeah, Magnus Robert. This scar on the cheek thing, those are cheekbones, clearly. That, that's, some people I've... reckon, do that scene in Rambo where they, they, they strap him up and they, the Viet Cong cut his face with a knife. People think it's like a, a Vietnam thing. I said, uh, was it a scar or was it cheekbones? Oh, I, I agree with it is cheekbones. I'll give you cheekbones. I did get that from that same chap, I believe. I raided his Simpsons video, which I will not credit. I refuse to credit. Stonecutters thing, the, the Simpsons wiki, I think, says 904. They just plug that number out of thin air. That, that, that's not from anywhere. There's no source for that. And if you were 904, that would make you a low-ranking member. Apparently, yeah. yes. And that is that is difficult. But the fact is he's standing there next to Stonecutter yeah. boss suggests that maybe... There's him and Wigan, number one. And then it's, it's Leopold. Yeah. So surely he's like in the top five, isn't he? He must be. If he's... I would say so. I didn't realise he was just... Stonecutter at all. I missed that completely. We're all learning here. He's a stonecutter. He's dead. No scars. Cross stitch. Cross stitch, maybe. What do you make of the cross stitch beef? Is that, is that, are you accepting that? Or is that the no. tapped out people just going off the deep end? Again, I mean, where does that come from? It's some nonsense on a game on your phone, isn't it? No, it's, it's, it's I mean, I'm insulted you brought it up to me. If it's not on the telly, it doesn't count. Right. Is that right. what you're saying? Those are my, I mean, that's the way I, I play it, yeah. But, you know, I'm open to new ideas. We've talked about the multiverse. We've talked about Tapped Out being its own its own universe. What is your take on Bongo? Tonight we're going to be looking at the Bongo comics. There's a prime Leo appearance. In your mind, is Bongo canon or is it its own pocket universe? For me, it's nonsense, no. It's just some guy who he couldn't get a job at the B now, you know what I mean? They've given him this thing and he's just... Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, I'm not. I mean, it's interesting because you do... Leo, Leopold's biggest role, basically, isn't it? Like, you know, he opens up, we, we see an internal sort of monologue between Leopold and himself while he's talking. It's, it's a metaphor for, I don't know what, it's, 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 it's complete rubbish, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's just made up in the mind of pale, dandy sketcher, basically. I imagine that man now frequents bus bus station bins looking for looking for ideas. No, no, it's good. I like the writing. I love the strip. It's just the uh, it's just the point. Ultimately, well, I, I think I think whoever drew that comic should be ashamed of themselves for tarnishing Leopold's glorious reputation. If you're going to use Leopold, at least let him do his joke. You know the whole yeah the mission direct. He has another bongo cast as well, but another bongo appearance that I left out that is equally as long, but it's just a Ferris Bueller parody, and he's the headmaster, and it's that's more confusing to me because he's he's sort of your third choice. You've got Skinner, then you've got Chalmers, then you probably go to Edna, then probably Hoover, and then Leopold, but... I think someone in the Bongo world just had a fondness for uh, Leopold and wanted to use him twice. Maybe it was the same person. We've always taken mods. Bongo appearances as sort of within the realm, our cousins. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at Leo as it being a possibility that it's real. I can't argue with that. If only we could get a name on those bongos, because then we could email him. Oh, did you see the bushes, Russell? There. Oh yeah, Leo's big return. Shall Season we thirty-three. Exactly. Shall we jump into content? So, Beef, I'm, I, if you've got notes at the ready, that'll be great. I'm going to I'm going to paint a picture in your mind of what happened in that scene. Now, I know it's burned into your cerebral cortex, your Henry's hippocampus, but I I'm going to I'm going to paint it one more time for our listeners out there. So, clip one, season five, episode nineteen, sweet sweet Seymour's badass song. Chalmers is at the lectern in the school hall on the stage. He says, boys and girls, because of Principal Skinner's sudden departure, I've had to bring a new principal. He speaks slowly and seriously and turns to gesture to a severe looking man sat on the burst stage. I know that lots of characters have been introduced to us on that very stage. 
There is a musical stab and we get a classic back of the head shot, as Chalmers says. Leopold, the student, gasp as Leopold approached the lectern with angry vigor. All right, you little punks, pick up your freaking ears because I'm only going to be saying this once. From now on, things are going to be very, very different around here. What well, sounds like the hooded claw to me. Gasp. With your new principal, Ned Flanders. His eyes get wide and he gestures with hope. It's a misdirect. Ned goes on with some go. I'll put the power back in principal. And the kids laugh. He walks back like a bison. Chalmers says, I put the super back in superintendent. Crickets. It's the same exact joke. Leo looks surly. No response. What gives, Leo? And I say, what is their relationship? Beef, what, this was the moment it all changed for you. You know, this is when a boy became a man. This, this spectacle, it came out of nowhere. It was, it was the back end of the series, 96. You know, it was, Britpop was at its height. You, we just had your 96. It was a tumultuous time. Um, the toys were still in power. Just, and, you know, I was flailing around and all, all of a sudden, there he is on my TV. And I was like, yeah, maybe one day, that's what I could do. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I think as first impressions go, what, what a debut. Do you not think? Like, oh, 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 oh. oh. Even decades later, the, the waves are still being felt. For, at that yeah. point, did you run out immediately and buy a brown suit and, and bulk up? Or did that come later? Uh, I already had the brown suit, coincidentally. Uh, I, again, we, we just it struck a chord with me. Brown's always been, people denigrate the colour brown, you know. Oh, brown is the, the colour of, you know, cardboard and stuff not at all no there's many shades to it it's great i've got a small frame so i could never be physically the man that we pulled is but mentally you know i'm talking mentally you know yeah just the, the way he carried himself exactly like a leopard slash bison ready to pounce but mm -hmm. he didn't pounce and i think that's the majesty of him he held exactly. back we all knew what power was inside those hands and eyes and eyebrows. I have a question for Beef. Did it lead towards any kind of specific desire to misdirect children and yeah, then that's, that's my give bit them yeah. <laughs> the opposite of false hope, real hope? Yeah. Well, I'm terrible at Christmas uh, with my sister's kids. I pretend I've got my bike. I've just got them uh, a, a, a bag of marbles or something. You know, it's the old, uh, the old Leopold. Yeah, I, I, the Leo switch. The Leo switch. Yeah. Give him a severed head of a kitten, but inside it had been scooped out and there's Maltesers in there. Mm, yeah. yeah. It was funny at first, but yeah, I've been told not to do it anymore. So. But you got to live your life in the same way Leopold did, or does. That's what, yeah, the, the, the Leo switch, yeah, that's what I've taken from him, and, along with the brown suits and the, yeah, and just the, no, just the way, you know, things, the attitude, you know, the vibe, what I'm on. Cheekbones are important, you know, I've tried to sort of cultivate them a bit, but maybe yes. you know, I'll, get, I'll get them. I think you've got yeah. a little bit, you've got a little bit going on. What you need to do is get some of that cotton wool stuffed up there like uh, Marlon Brando. You get the angle at the top with the cotton wool balls, and then what you do is you uh, super glue the inside, little, you super glue a matchstick to each side of your cheeks on the inside, it, it kind of sucks in at this part, <laughs> but then you pop it out <laughs> with... That's how, that, I mean, that's how they do it on the catwalk. I don't know how we do it as just normal people. I think you put magnets in your mouth. You put magnets on your tongue and then put magnets, invisible magnets or skin coloured magnets on your cheeks. New. Because that gives Call it a them square new. bump then too. Nice. How do you I did. To your tongue? That's up to you to figure out. You can't, uh, you can't buy magnets anymore, can you? Not legally. Not only. No. You used to be able to buy them in post offices, but you can't get them these days. Too many people no. started putting them on the side of tellies and fridges and it broke and then they said no more of this. Banned. In reference to Leopold, I um I did I noted that he, he this first appearance he sounds sort of like a nineteen twenties sort of like Chicago y fossy kind of character, but I'm not a fossy caster. But only in this one appearance it doesn't return in the next one, the accent's completely gone. So that was sort of uh, interesting because it's only like the season after that he speaks again. Um it's suggesting it's intentional. Yes. I'm interested in his relationship with Chalmers, considering Chalmers is his boss. They seem to be 
the fact that he calls him Leo implies that they have some kind of friendship or like some kind of colloquial way of speaking to each other. They're not formal. And uh, I do like that. And Chalmers is easily in my top five. And I'd just like to remind you of my favourite line of his, which is, I've had it with this school, Skinner, the low test score, the low test scores, class after class of ugly, ugly children. Oh, Gary, do you think Leo calls him Gaz? No. Um, it is one, one interesting note on, on, on this scene uh, when uh, Ned Flanders says, oh, I'll put the pals back in principal. And then the super, superintendent says, I'll put the super back into And then he, his gag falls flat. And then he turns to Leo and it's the same damn gag, Leo, what gives? And then he, does, he tries another one and that gag also falls flat and he stones off the stage. Leo's face in that moment, he, he looks distraught because... That speaks volumes about their relationship. He's got, he, he loves the man, do you know what I mean? He, he respects him professionally and pers on a personal level, I think. There's something going on there. Does he get back up and berate the children at that point or not? He says, like, no, what, what you've done, you little freaks, and he storms off. Like, he runs after, after Charlie. So. That was cut oh, from my... Yeah, that was, that was accidentally cut. <laughs> but I, in my mind, I remembered that being the thing where he got up and he berated the children which does suggest that his love and his camaraderie and his respect for Gary Chalmers is, is high. It seems to be a love or hate situation. It's one or the other. He's either going to angrily defend you or he's going to angrily scream at you. He's a good man to have in your corner, I imagine. His natural face is a seething, like, rage face, though. Like, once he's said the calm things and he sits back down, Chalmers is making his joke, which I don't buy that Chalmers would do, to be honest. I don't think he would care at all. I, I, I kind of could see Chalmers making that joke. I know what you're saying, day to day, but he's up there on the stage. It's an easy crowd. He's just seen Ned Flanders get a big laugh, and I think he just fancy, oh, I'll have a go at this. It's a, it's a tapping, you know what I mean? And, uh... but maybe this is the way for me to change and become more to these people than I've ever been before. Maybe. He, show, he might be showing off to Leopold as well, you know, trying to be the big man, you know. Mm, yeah. That's true. I think Leo. That's... Watch this, Leo. And then mm. it all falls, and it's only his rage that saves the situation. So we move on to clip two. Can I just go and get a drink with, very quickly? Uh, clip two. Same exact joke. What did? <laughs> but escalated. Seymour is in, this is season six, episode 21. I don't know what it's called. Seymour is in Bart's class. He says, I don't know what you did to all those substitutes, but it's going to stop now. He stirs angrily. Leopold, he slams the door open and towers over them. All right, you shut up. All right, listen up, you little freaks. The fun stops here. You're going to shut your stinking traps and behave, damn it. His breathing is laboured with rage. He is wearing his classic brown suit and tie combo. This is one substitute you're not going to screw with. Leans in with clenched fists. We get a classic back of the leg shot, cowboy style. The children gulp. Great facial expressions of rage with eyebrows. What eyebrows? Huge teeth, then misdirect. Demure head tilted. Leo gestures to door. Marge Simpson. A Bart gulps. Beef. The use of the word demure, and it is demure. There's something the way the way that guy tilts his head. It just gets me every time. I think the way it's drawn is there's a grace to it. Do you know what I mean? It's in terms of I mean I'm no classical artist, but the form of it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, beautiful. It um, is art. I don't think it's not often I would describe the Simpsons really in the same breath as Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo David, but but I'd say that that moment really captured an essence, yeah. an essence of something. Yeah, just just the, oh, it wasn't the full hilt, but it was everything. It was the whole package. It was the eyes, the mouth. He got such an expressive face with those brows. You know what I mean? He, he, they kind of raise and they tilt to the arm. Yeah, it's just somewhere about that moment. It just gives me tingles every time. I love watching that. Yeah. I, I would watch that on a loop all day, every day. I agree that it is a timeless piece of art. That little head nudge. It just changes the way he is completely with that one motion. It's just great that they've just decided to do the exact same joke, probably less, ju either just over or just under a year later. Uh, and just, they've just amped him up, or I've written my note, rastified him by 10%, like Pucci. It's the same guy, but just, they couldn't, I don't think they could have gone any bigger with it. I think in this, this one, time. what's interesting, I think he, he calls them little freaks rather than little punks. And there's a bit more, slightly more aggressive. Yeah, the word he freak. hates them. <laughs> It gives it more oomph, I think. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, he seems to hate them more this time. Yeah, this <laughs> this is. I think we're talking the pinnacle. I didn't um, know that Chalmers in the last in clip one. Chalmers 
literally makes a point that he is making the same exact joke that Flanders just made and nobody laughed. And then the next time we see Leopold is that scene, but whereas nobody laughed, I would agree. I would argue that everybody laughed, including me, mm. Lawrence or Flimsy. Would you say in many ways it's a meta joke because it is exactly the same joke and the second time around maybe some people didn't laugh. They were like, that's the same joke. But then many people, because of the escalation, I, I liken it to Rocky IV to, to the Rocky One. I know they're not direct sequels, but for me they, they were sequels of a kind. <laughs> and I would say in many ways by them doing exactly the same joke, we're getting both a laugh and not a laugh. In, in, in a lot of ways, it says that, yes, it's very lazy. Yes, we've really not tried very hard with this. But at the same time, it's perfect. It's like if someone goes around to your house and you give them a slab of dairy milk, Oreo dairy milk, you haven't tried very hard. But uh, you, haven't tried very, you haven't tried very hard. But it's perfect, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So anything more is, to say I, about this second appearance? Um, just that his accent's gone, but his facial expressions have uh, doubled. There's the okay. one where he's got like really small circular eyes and his, his mouth's really big and his teeth are gritted and it's... Uh, yeah, so the, just, the, I, he, I he, think... He this time. Like you were saying, the first time he's a bit more... Yeah, yeah. Whereas he, he loses <laughs> that, that element of it this time. It's more, I don't know. He's not as sort of um, gangsterish as you were saying. You're like Jimmy Cagney, kind of. He just just look ridiculous. Like I think the most times that like it's basically the same as like Disco Stew or something. This where they would bring in a character for one gag, and then that character becomes like a, a sort of permanent favourite. But Leo just completely vanishes after this again, by like two very small appearances. And I think it's probably because of how they designed him. They just probably put too much detail into him to then continue to be bothered to put him in the background. I mean, how could you possibly think that they have scars? Look at them. That, that I, uh, yeah. Mad. It, it was on the other side before as well. Yes, one yeah. identical. Symmetrical on either side, and then he has those scars under his eyes, those round scars. Maybe yes. the person who made that YouTube video, whenever they see a wrinkle on a man's face or a woman, they think that it's a scar. And so maybe they're in the supermarket and they see an old woman who's all like, like really wrinkly, they, they think she's like a knife fighter or something. It's oh, Gran, why have you got all those slashes across your forehead? No, no, YouTube, William, it's just. Wrinkles, because I'm old. I don't know what that means, Gran. Or oh, you will one day. Battle one. Yeah. In the, in, in the build-up to this, I mean, if you were going to make a live-action Simpsons film, who would you cast as Leopold? You know? oh, that is that's a great question. That is yeah. a great question. Who, who would you be? Get us started. Well, you know the actor Dan Hedaya, I was thinking? He plays Tom Hanks' boss in Joe vs. the Volcano. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know him. And in the, the Adams Family movies, he's kind of... He hasn't got the... To build, you'd have to super computer jiggery him on the body of a wrestler. But I think Dan, if you just Google Dan Hedaya, maybe put you know, thin his hair out a bit. Yeah. What about Ving Rames? I think he's dead, so we'd have to see. GI. Yeah. Is Ving Rames dead? He can't be. No, he's alive. Ving Rames is alive. Good, oh. so we can get him. And if you pushed me and I was casting Ned Flanders, I think that lass who used to be on Coronation Street and now plays all the nurses, she's solving mm. gritty crimes all the time. She'd be Ned Flanders. She, I think there's just something about her. Her slim frame, <laughs> I'd love to see her in a big tash. I'd give I Leopold think... the rolling, I think. Oh. He's got a sort of an air of Tommy Lee Jones about him, if you think about it. A big Jones. What I'd do is I'd CGI him to be 25% bigger. Big Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or just shoot him in the foreground and put everyone out. Yeah, do it that way. Yeah. That's how Wes Anderson would do it, isn't it? Uh, so, clip three. Sweets and Sour Marge. So this is the human pyramid one. Are you familiar with this one, Beef? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I took part in a human pyramid once. In 1992, um, Whitley High School burned down. Um, it was a Tuesday evening, I lived around the corner. We all ran over there. The fire, the fire brigade weren't there. And in the, in, in the, in the top floor, there was a little boy waving. And he was saying, help me. Help me, took me on. The, the, the residents, we, we built a pyramid. I, I was midway up and we got the little boy down. And uh, and, and then the fire engine turned up 10 minutes later and, and we all got chocolate bars. Nice. It's How many levels was the pyramid? About 15, 16, somewhere. It was a big one. What level were you on? About halfway up. Did you suffer any permanent back 
disorders from no, well you had the big ones at the bottom you see the dads and the big you know and, and, the, and the brothers I, and then you had the women at the top i, I was i was about 12 so i was you know kind of well you but the lads were below the mothers it was the it was the 90s it was a different time you know it, yeah dads lads mums that was the order some guy was shouting dads lads mums that's, that's all right. so I, uh, what? dads lads mums it's easy it's yeah. easy <laughs> And this little boy was freaking out. Anyway, so the, this scene really resonated. No, it doesn't matter to me so much. <laughs> yeah. That lad grew up to be... Um, to well, interesting. He, actually, he went on to kill a pensioner. <laughs> it was the same lad that did that shit on the dance floor in the reflex. Do you remember the headline for that? Turder on the dance floor. What a, come on. What do you make yeah. of this human pyramid with Leo on the second... The of... If you look at, look at these between, you've got the, the Texas oil billionaire on one side. Yeah, and the John Walters character on the other. I, I just find that fascinating. I'm not sure why, because it's two ends of the spectrum. Do you know what I mean? And there's Leopold, the everyman, holding it all together. It is a strange group of people. I I think this is probably in a late night session where they did many configurations of this pyramid to just see which which connections are strongest. And I think if we spend a few minutes just looking at the message it's given us, what message do you get from from that from that pyramid? It's a bit all over the place, isn't it? I mean, it's got two, three peaks, actually, you could say, because you've got Dunch, Lunch Lady Doris. Some people refer to that as the third peak. They, they've kind of gone for dads, lads and mums. Yeah, but not really, because you've got, like... I mean, who's that above Leopold? Is that, is that um, Millex's mum? I think it's Millex's grandmother. Grandmother, yeah, right. So she, I mean, she's, like, doing this where they're lifting there. Mad, isn't it? And then you've got... Well, yeah, the, I... uh, You were talking about, the, is it... Dancer, she's in there, the belly dancer. It's a weird group of people. Like, I thought Leo was in there because of his size, because yeah. he would make sense logistically at the bottom of a pyramid. But then the people around him don't you make like, sense. Bottom, bottom right, you've got Skinner and Chalmers. You think they're just sliding yeah. in next to Chalmers, in there? Yeah, it's strange that he's not with them. I also picked out a couple of our cast cast favourites in this. You can see Doris, Kashmir, Stu, Roy's in there, which is the human poochie. And uh, there's a very, like, just above Hibbert, like where Krusty is, if you go like four up, there's like an adult Todd Flanders face. It's definitely Frankish. But yeah, there's a, a couple of our friends in this pyramid, but the extent of his appearance here is because they needed to fill up a pyramid. And I assume they thought of Leopold because of his size. It seems like he's, he's filled with absolute rage. Uh, is this because of his inclusion or simply the pain? of having all of those humans pressing down on his spinal column. Both. Well, he must have chosen to be included. Like, we're not in some kind of reality where he knows he's an animated character. So he's made this choice. But he does look... But again, like, his resting face seems to be fury. But such a small image, they've continued to include the cheekbones. Well done, all those Koreans. Hope they yeah. got a bonus. Steve, do you think Leopold lives in Springfield? I, I think Leopold, um, he's, he's community-minded, you know what I mean? He's not an island. Yeah, I think he lives, he lives local. I'm, I'm not familiar with, with neighbourhoods. Um, I'd say he'd probably live in a, 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 I'm thinking like a studio flat, you know, a bedsit. Quite a, a, a sort of a isolated existence, you know, kind of dinner for one. I could see him maybe watching like the Death Wish films, you know, and sort of Gene Hackman, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, John Wayne, Clint Eastwood. That's I could him. see him going for a Cold War thriller, he might, the mar marathon man. I mean, do you think he's pro-gun? We haven't seen enough of him to know whether he's really pro-gun, but mm. the next clip suggests he's verting or subverting expectations. I see him as a gun guy. I think I was going to say the next clip sort of is a bit of a giveaway. I also I forgot to say I've made the connection to um, the guy from Full Metal Jacket, uh, Lee Ermey. The drill the, sergeant. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I feel like that's what they were going for the first time they brought him in. I'd say more so the second clip, actually. Like, just the, they wanted to go to that sort of level. So that's kind of what it reminded me of. And I think at this point, he had been on the show. So it would have been quite funny if they brought him in to do the voice, but they didn't. So yeah. that's that. Yeah, that that drill sergeant's famous for a line, isn't he? You're the kind of guy, uh, yada, yada, yada. How, how would Leopold <laughs> deliver that, that very famous line from Full Metal Jacket? I feel like we'd see him saying it to, like, Ralph. I feel like he would have the same level of anger, but he would say it to, like, the nicest, sweetest kid. Because he, he seems to hate all these children. So I, think I think maybe, you missed, be... I, maybe, yeah, maybe you're not quite clear of the line I'm referring to. No, I am.
Looks like the best part of you ran down the crack of your mama's ass and then ended up as a brown stain on the bed sheets. Oh, you are? You still think yeah. you said that to Ralph? <laughs> Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, I do think he would say that to Ralph because it would be the... And he, and he would say this to a, a child of limited... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> limited mental capacity. Yeah. I'm not backing down on this. He, uh, he would, the, the comedy would come from the fact that he hates all children, even the sweetest, nicest boy in school. I regret but asking if I must, I'll, I'll go I for Wendell. That question. Clip four. Simple Simpson, season 15, episode 19. Man on stage, graying mullet and tash, hat, American flag, strangling a bald eagle on the cover of some mag he is singing. He is waving an American flag. We cut to Leopold waving an American flag with great collection of compadres. Bumblebee Man, Sea Captain, Herman One Arm, Lovejoy, Kent Brockman, Molman, The Chef, Apu's brother and old Jewish man, half of whom are not actually American. Are we suggesting he is hyper USA like Herman or not actually American? but became very, very American, like Henry Kissinger. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack. Um, on the one hand, he's a flag waver, but I think maybe that stems from his military background, you know, ex, ex military tour of duty, because the fact that he stood next to the Bumblebee Man uh, and Hispanic suggests that he's not. He's somewhere in the middle. I, I don't know, it's interesting. He loves his country. He steadfastly wants to burn an arm, and yet he's got an open door policy when it comes to immigration. So he's a... Uh, He's a complicated man. I, I don't know. Yeah. What, 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 what do you think? To throw it back to you. Well, once again, I think that uh, dichotomy that we saw in his first appearance, that it, maybe it wasn't a misdirect. Maybe he genuinely is a Jacqueline Hyde character. And yeah, he's a live and let live, but he'll release his arms over his cold, dead body. What do you this think? Is a, I think this is a very weird group of people. Like, two specific almost to not be a reference to something because you've got the very pro like Herman like pro war pro gun and they're at this sort of like like rally I don't really know what's going on to be honest I know it's just very pro America like well strangling a bald eagle isn't particularly pro American but the whole vibe is very um patriotic and it's just such a strange bunch considering that Leopold this is only his fourth maybe fifth if I've missed the stone cutter one and I've probably missed like quite a few here but from what I can see, he doesn't appear frequently, even in like the earlier seasons like this. But somebody has chosen him to be one of these like 10 characters. And I don't know why. I don't know what Leopold sort of conveys why he got used here. It's not related to the school. It's not about how big he is. And he hasn't been shown before to be this sort of like pro-America kind of character. So I, I don't know why he made the cut here. Happy about it, but I don't know why he made the cut. This is the expression that he's that he has while he's holding that flag. How, what, what do you make of that? I'd say that's the happiest he can look. If you think that's that's joy at holding the American flag? I think, well, that's a smile. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. He looks slightly nervous, excited, hopeful, determined. But he's, uh, yeah, he's the, the upturned corner, that, that, that is a smile, like the corner of his mouth is upturned, do you know what I mean? He's not, he's not clenching his teeth. He's not, something about, such an expressive face. I mean, it's kind of a pixelated uh, image, but it just speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah, if we, if we could somehow get technology where we could make this even crystal clear, I don't um, think we'd learn any more. I think everything's right there for us, like... Uh, like a smorgasbord of emotions. If you look at just the top half of his face, now, nice. he's, got, now he's got scars across his forehead. <laughs> and, uh, and the eyes are hopeful rage. And the teeth, they're, I'd say they were rageful hope. If I, had, if I had to put two words together to describe them. Someone said one's not enough. He taught us the hope of rage and the rage of hope. Exactly. So, shall we move on to the Bongo cast? Skinner, I'm lacking context, but seems to be forcing Bart to be some kind of cheerleader. And the coach is Assistant Superintendent Leopold. And we meet Leopold and, and he's screaming at some small children, some small girls. I want to see spirit, and I mean S-P-I-R-I-T out of you maggots. You think you're man enough to be a pomet, Simpson? I guess so, I'll try. There is no try, there is only cheer, Star Wars reference. Now go put on this uniform. 
be for the make of, of this. Uh, as we said earlier, maybe not fully Simpsons universe, maybe some sub Arbino fanboy has got his hands on a set of felt tips, but let's give it some, let's let's give it some eyes. I mean, right, this is kind of new media to me. I mean, who is this for? This this comic. Was it aimed at children or was it aimed at you? you no, know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not having a go at it. No, I'm just trying to work. Why would you put if it's if it's the kids? Why put a Star Wars reference in there that a child wouldn't understand? You know, in this day and age. I agree. It's a question I've never considered before. That who are the comics actually? But I Is bought it? them as a, like a twelve year old, and it sort of worked. I don't know who it's for, but. Um... Yeah, it's not written. It's not written as if it's for adults. I mean, what what did you get out of it as a twelve year old? Did, did did you chuckle? Um, I don't specifically. I remember just sort of vaguely looking for mod references in them. I'd say a chuckle's probably the highlight. I don't think I don't think we're going above a chuckle. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> I've seen so far that would would elicit a chuckle from most mm. preteens. To be honest, it, one thing we've noticed with the bongo is they take a lot of license and they're very shoddy. It looks like they've been cobbled together quickly by people who don't really, haven't really swum in the waters of The Simpsons, which is why it's both fair and unfair to point our eyes towards it two decades later. But we move on and we see Leopold, he's, he's spitting with rage. And uh, I'd say this is one of the more expressive pictures. He, I, I'd say, if anything, his rage is up a level from what we've seen before. Simpson, that he knows Bart's name, this is not talk time. It's cheer time. Get over there. Yes, sir. And the mill house is simply saying the word perks as a question. I have cut out any panel that Leo wasn't in, so it's it's it doesn't really change anything, though, to be honest. The context, you know, we're not looking at the movie Memento. You can basically, you know, you can piece this one together without the information I've excluded. Was there a PE teacher at Springfield Elementary? Mrs. Pommelhorst, I believe she's called. And some guy who threw, throws dodgeballs at them came in like season 11 or something and stuck around too. What yeah, there's... led Leopold to be offered this esteemed position as cheerleader coach at Springfield Elementary? Military background. He seems like he's yeah. very much applying what he learned over in Nam for these small, for these small cheerleaders. What's his goal? What's his end game? Win. Very much like Kashmir, he wants to do the best. Particularly here, I don't think we get that from anything other than this bongo appearance, but he's very driven to win here and there's not really a... I don't even think there's... If there is a prize, he doesn't get any of it. So this is all passion. But again, there's no reason for him to be the character doing this. Like, like Beef just noted. There are two gym teachers and then there's Chalmers. So I think they just wanted the angry drill sergeant. I would give it to Fat Tony. This, he's kind of driven by his hatred for Skinner, though, in this story. Isn't that the whole thing? He wants to prove Skinner wrong. So the, the fleshing yes. out that side of his, uh, his psyche a little bit, yeah. I wonder what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. What's what's Leo's office routine look like? Is his desk tidy? I mean, have you ever been in the office of a school administrator? Not really. Try and avoid those places if I can. I did see one uh, one point and it had a stack of, uh, you know, Terry's cup of orange boxes. <laughs> wow! Okay. And the, and uh, and a few pieces of paper that were not uh, damaged were smeared in chocolate. I mean, I imagine his office will be quite well ordered. Everything in in the right place. Filing cabinet, um, meticulous attention to detail. Probably not no chocolates. I can't see Leopold enjoying chocolates. Potato meat and potatoes kind of guy. You know what I mean? I could see that. Would he chew like on a? They look like they're sticks, but they're actually uh, licorice. Licorice sticks. <laughs> um, yeah, why not? I could, yeah, as a treat. Yeah, I don't think he's got anything in his office for uh, pleasure. Like I was thinking, maybe he had like like a like a Boba Fett bobblehead or something. But I don't, I don't see him having. I don't think he takes enjoyment from a lot of things. Like even this, he's not taking enjoyment in this. Uh, it's coming from a place of spite and com like competition. The closest we've seen him to expressing joy is listening to someone talk about strangling a bald eagle. I, I think the man in the song was suggesting that's bad. I get what you mean. A lot of flag burners who've got too much freedom, kind of, uh, kind of vibe. Yeah. Chin up, suck in those guts. I've never seen a sorrier group of recruits in my life. As he strolls away, glancing backwards at Cherry, Terry, Bart, and Janie. What's the P in reference to? Uh, I, I think they're called the Pumets. Like, there's something about the Springfields. Like, the, 
the animal is a puma. They seem to have referenced that quite a few times in the show, and I don't know why specifically, but I think that's what this is about. He says, wait, I'm sorry, I may look and sound tough on the outside, but I'm really just a big cheerleader at heart. You're going to be the best darn pep squad the school has ever seen. Come on, it's time to show me what you've got. Did we miss something here, or did he just turn on a sixpence? I think we have missed something. The image of this is the least Simpsons-y sort of thing we've looked at, I think. He, he doesn't look like a Simpsons character at all. It looks like it's been drawn in a different style, and I uh, like it a lot. It's that, it's that face-on style. They just can't get it right with some characters coming, but he just looks bizarre in that. Face forward, Simpsons. Face forward, Leo. It's very apparent that the cheekbones in that face forward image as well. Listen, it's Come almost on. like I want to go into the internet and grab that lad by the scruff of his neck and bring him over here and say, "Look, look at this bongo." If you're in any doubt as to the, that the, the nature of the, the cheekbones on his face, this this will leave you. You you probably write a letter of apology to each and every YouTube viewer after seeing this. Yeah, Ma Magnus oh. Robert is his name. Yeah. Oh, Magnus, listen. Magnus Robert. I know you. I know you're probably listening out there right now. But listen, you've got some reparations to make. I'm waiting. I wait. The next day, I figured I should return this. I get desperate to quit, but I stink. Sure you do, but you stink with spirit. And then, change of heart, you really want me to stay? Come on, girls, tell him who's our favourite pomet. And they spell out Bart's name and they're shaking their giant hands. I don't know. That's that what you make of this. It is, it's just that flip again. He's done it twice in this bongo already, from angry face to nice face. This is what bongo does best. It takes, it takes a well-received joke from the Simpsons TV show and just batters it into the ground. And it's, um, it's a delight to see it. It's nice that he has some kind of faith in Bart. At least they're giving him some kind of character arc in this story that he's he didn't want Bart to be there from the looks of things. And now he's sort of come around to the idea. But I still think he would walk away from this and uh, push Ralph up against a wall and say all those horrible things to him. Beef. Beef. Hmm. I mean, this is where Bongo loses me, to be honest. It's just so out of character. They've they, 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 they captured the essence of the man... You know, I, I enjoy the drawing, but the words coming out of his mouth, that's just not Leopold. Uh, yeah. I'm struggling with this one. I'll, I'll, I'll... I, I get you. I get you because Sorry. if we take him at face value, he doesn't like those kids. And yeah, what turned him in the bongo that he would actually give Bart multiple chances to prove himself. And it, he really seems to like his little crew. It's, it's a lot like in that swimming movie where the guy comes in at the beginning and he's like, oh, I'm not a big fan of you lot in this team. And then they win him over with the, their kind of hijinks. Yes, that one swimming movie where that happens. <laughs> I, I agree, though, that the capturing the essence thing is correct. Like, there's something, it captures like an aura of the Simpsons, but it leaves out sort of the, the comedy and the intelligence. <laughs> It's very hollow. This is where they sort of frustrate me as well, in that it's a comic. It would have taken one panel to explain why Leo is the cheerleading captain. Because he's not even a... He doesn't work at this school. He works at all the schools. Does he run multiple cheerleading teams? Is he somehow been tasked with, with some kind of cheerleading coordination across the Springfield the wider Springfield district. We ne those are questions that were never answered. And in the TV show, I, I guarantee they would have spent a good few minutes really giving some backstory. And yeah, I think this is why Bongo only lasted 20 years. <laughs> this kind of shoddy, flimsy storytelling. Long story short, they let Bart back in. With the game coming up, we're all very excited. Good, thanks for keeping a lid on Bart. And this is the real, this is where things really get hot between Leopold and Skinner. What do you mean? He says, I can't have him making a public spectacle. This is why I banished him to the spirit squad, but he won't make any trouble. You don't really expect anyone to pay attention to a bunch of clumsy prepubescent pom pom girls during a football game. And this is Leopold's lost it here. He turns to Bart and he does something that, e even in the world of Bongo, it's hard to comprehend. He tells him to pull a prank to embarrass Skinner. He doesn't need to tell him what. Bart's already, he's good for it. Come on, what's going on I think here? you're wrong. He's asking Bart, is, is he in it just to pull a prank? He isn't asking him to pull a prank. He's just asking him, was that why he joined? 
mean, I get, I get that, but I believe my interpretation is is more funny and better. Yes, I thought you just misread the words. There's, it's possible. We'll never know. B, what's your, what's your take I mean, on this? Uh, the, the panel on the right, where he's leaning down and he's got his hands on on Bart's shoulders. I mean, that, that's that's beautiful. That, that's supreme illustration. But it's, the dialogue's bland. You know, I mean, we've seen Leopold in the past, and he's talking about freaks and stinking mouths, and it's all. Da, 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 da. It's just poor writing, basically. It's yeah. as if David Mamet had written the original stuff in the thing, and then David Platt. The old England captain coming in mm. the, the, the bongo stuff. And whatever people say, a platform moment switch, it's never going to win any Golden Globes or Oscars. No, bland is the absolute word to use to, to describe the stories presented to us in the bongo world. But I'm not disappointed because any Leo is good Leo for me. And so here we see him crying with a tear running down his fairly well rendered face. And he says, you make me so proud. Principal Skinner says that no one will notice us. That sounds to me like a challenge to me. And I say, bring, bring it on. And then they win, the Bongo people. They haven't put a lot of effort into displaying their win. So we just see them floating in, in her. But we see a big old grin on Leopold's face. Then a, a, a blonde-haired woman with Batman glasses comes on and says, that rocks. Good job, Superintendent Chalmers. Uh, Homer says, woohoo, that's my boy. Chalmers, thank you for saving my career, Leopold. Now, please excuse me while I extend my personal thanks to Principal Skinner as well. Ha, 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 says Bart. So, Beef, what do you make of that little, little thing? I know right by now the bland, salty taste of the bongo is outstayed as welcome, but I'm not one to cut corners. Well, I mean, if we are to believe that bongo is canon then i mean thank you for saving my career leopold big potatoes that so uh, leopold set for life there if he hasn't i mean I, I don't know what this story is of this woman she was like maybe on the next level up from superintendent chalmers maybe and i mean wow saving saving his boss's job yeah, yeah. so she would be I like mean, again, ultra it's... intendant ultra a uh, hyperintendant yeah Incredible. I mean, he, he looks he, he looks made up, doesn't he? Look at him. That's that, that grin that we saw at the flag waving. He hasn't got the same steeliness in his eyes. He's a bit more... It's the shorts, maybe. He's a bit more relaxed, but it's that, that grin, yeah. That's, I'd say that's on a par with maybe even happier than he was at the flag waving. His fist is still clenched, but that yeah. might be in preparation to give, give Seymour a good old walloping. I agree this is probably the happiest. Well, the one above this, I've no idea who that woman is. Uh, the one above this, like the third to last panel, he looks very much like a, that's what I call mm -hmm. a kawaii Leopold. That's what I'd see like a small, you know, they do those sort of cute figures with the little, the happy eyes. Oh yeah. So we're going to have to move on to the art there. Leopold yeah. art is few and far between, but here is one I found on the internet. Would you would you like to describe what you can see there in front of your eyeballs? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of Googled sort of Leopold fan art because you, you thought for a guy who made such a big impression, there'd be loads of stuff out there, fan fiction and art. There's nothing. This is like the only example I found, really. Uh, I mean, I'd put that up on my wall. I think this picture here has captured him. Mm. This little one here, I'd put that on my wall, put that on a coaster. Bottom, bottom, bottom right, actually, the, the, there is a demunus, you know, the head tilt and the arm extension. That one's good. Yeah. That reminds yeah. me of somebody. An Al Pacino, am I thinking of Al? Maybe not. He looks very Disney mm. in the kind of bottom right one as well, like a Disney sort of Leopold. You know, that's cool. Yeah, I'm very, I like this a lot. This is by Ultimate Z. So, Ultimate Xavier out there, thank you very much for your reinterpretation. And then this one, which is a bit of a stretch, was someone who did the, the <laughs> Simpsons as uh, Batman characters. Someone suggested this might be based on Leopold, but it's the Penguin um, <laughs> beef. I don't get Leopold from that. I'll be honest with you. I mean, he has got a cheekbone and he's scowling, but the mouth's totally different. He hasn't got the, the, the hair on the top of his head. It's like Bleeding Gums Murphy with someone else's head. It's a combination. Bleeding Gums Murphy's in there as well. I can see Comic Book Guy a lot as well. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's Danny DeVito as the Penguin. Is that right? Mixed with... It's, it's interesting. <laughs> I'd like to speak to the artist. Well, the artist is Philip DGLS out there on DeviantArt, which is a hotbed mm. for um, copyright infringement. So Leopold it, would be an awful choice for the Penguin as well. Yeah. He'd be more of a Bane character, wouldn't he? Just, you know, a bit of yeah. brute. 
Surely Mole Man or someone of that stature would be the Penguin. Maybe Uta. Well, Philip, I hope you're listening. You've disappointed us all with your art. But this one, which barely counts as fan art, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what it was, but someone has taken Leopold's body and kind of stretched it sideways um, and then put the words Amber Dempsey over it. So do you, do you think this warrants a minute of your time? I think that's the best of the lot. I love it. Kind of. It's obviously a bongo because there's a speech bubble coming from his eyebrow. It's true. It's like that Captain America picture. Have you seen that Captain America picture that um, is always mocked by, um, what's his name? Rob, Rob, Lee, Rob Lee Field. Rob, Le- Rob Lee Field. Rob, 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 Rob Lee Field. Captain America. The one with the big, with the huge chest. <laughs> Wow. It's like that, it's like that Captain America. <laughs> this is the, the off mocked yeah. picture by the guy who uh, invented Deadpool and uh, but can't draw feet and somehow thinks that a, a, a man's chest could possibly look like that. So this he is, is superhuman. Amber Dempsey is just another character from uh, The Simpsons, like a small child. Okay, so it's a bit weird. And then we had this one, which is actually a bongo, but we can't really count it as fan art. It's very, it's, it's malevolent. This, I sent you this because this is my favourite thing that we've probably looked at in all of the bongo stuff. To me, this is really good. I really enjoy this. It's deranged. It's, it's unhinged. Again, it's another side of Leo. He's, he's hepped up on something, I don't know, and he's... Uh... I, I fear for him. I fear yeah, for, him. for his own. Yeah, for, for him, yeah. Oh, yeah, him and of him. Yeah, it's, it's, that's a great piece of work. I mean, I take it a bongo, man. But yeah, I take it all back. Just when we think we're done with the bongo, it'll bring out a wacky looking mod or an angry orange Leopold to uh, save all the damage previously done. What bongo does is it scales heights that the series could never really dream of, but it also hits absolute depth. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Which yeah. in itself, for a, a roller coaster, is um, is beautiful. Which is why we do spend some good time on Bongo. But that's it, Beef. We've reached the end of the first Leopold cast. Obviously, there'll be at least uh, two or three more. But before we finish up with a song, Beef, thank you very much for joining us. What do you? Uh, what did you make of this journey? I've loved it. You know what? I've, I've learned a lot. I, I learned. I learned stuff coming in. I did. You know, I did a bit of research. I dug. There wasn't as much Leopold stuff out there as I thought there was. But I've, I've come away with um, a newfound appreciation for the bongo. I think that's that's an area that I'm going to really get into now. I think uh, I'm going to start buying up all the back issues. Twenty years worth of, of stuff to go at. So exciting times here in Stockport. I, I, I need to run off. I've got a pub lunch booked at one o'clock. Sorry, sorry. I need to have nope. a shower. Sorry. No worries. We'll, we'll do the song. We got right, okay. covered. But just before you go, can you get spend one more minute on the question of whether Leopold is dead? Well, I think you we'll save on. it for the next next Leopold cast. But there is a clip from the movie that suggests that he may well be dead, which we didn't touch upon. We can't address it here or now because the, the ramifications of that are far reaching. So I mm. say... Let's, um, you know, just tease it. Put the punters in with that, you know, for next time. For Leo too. Well, Beef, it has been an absolute pleasure and a joy speaking to you. And you. Um, if you want to hear Beef's records under the name of Whitleycock, you can buy it on a bespoke MP3 pen. From the dark web. Record, Megan, the, the, there's a we, we overordered severely on, on the last one. <laughs> there's a there's the there's surplus stock that needs shifting. Uh, so we say 50p ago, probably doubles as a vet. Yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate what you bring to the world of art, and I only hope that you can bring more retired comedians back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that was a miss, a, a, miss, a, a financial misstep. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> No, thanks for having me on. It's been it's been amazing. I've loved it. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to start extolling the virtues of, of the modcast, but you know, it's, it's you're doing great work. Um, and Thank you. Yeah. Take it easy, my friend, and we will bring you back in in a year or two, or even sooner or later. Enjoy your shower, yeah. enjoy your meal, and mm. if there's any butcher there, save it for me. Cheers, yeah. guys. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye. All right, well, that was good to see Beef. That was great. It was fun. And uh, the circle is intact. So shall we finish up with a song? I'll do my notes about the sixth clip as my song lyrics. Good. Maybe I will too, because I had it. But we had to skip over the Simpsons movie appearance. But seeing as there's the Stonecutter one as well, there is 
a chance. And obviously season 33, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, let's do it. Let's sing our song purely about clip six. Who's going yeah. first? Um, I will. This was super annoying to find. Wigam and Co are shooting at the sand pit. As far as I can tell, he isn't anywhere else. We got an aerial shot of Leopold. I think he dies here. Back in away, back in away with Edna. I need to run off, I've got a pub lunch box at one o'clock. From what I can gather on Simpsons wiki appearances, Leopold hasn't been seen since. Slowly and wisely, he seems to be stagnant at the hold. I need to run off, I've got a pub lunch box at one o'clock. I don't know what makes him such a no-go in returning appearances. Grim features, but that's sort of how he always looks. Leopold, outside of his appearances, is nowhere to be seen. He watches on, probably, but does he run? <laughs> Full metal Leopold. And the Simpsons' house is engulfed in the vortex. <laughs> The end. Uh, what was that? Was that the eighth Simpsons Some Sums cast? Yeah. Wow. Well, great times. And thank you very much for beef. Stay safe inside the circle. Don't let your salt get don't let your salt get pushed away. And we shall see you all again sometime. We've had our first year, we've got the dance floor shit, so we've got that, that fella who tried to have it off with a post box and got murdered around the back of the Chinese chicken. <laughs> In the same way. <laughs> and, uh, and the man who was kind of bang, like getting it on with a, with a traffic cone, but he used the wide end, I would have used the narrow end. Yes, yeah. I mean, otherwise, I mean, oh, no, we don't want to go down there. We're getting crude now. No. Bye. Bye. I need to run off. I've got a whole lunchbox at one o'clock.